Hello friends and welcome back. Welcome to another episode of the Mind and Muse Crafts Podcast. I am your host Caroline and this little bit of time that we spend together is basically spent talking about the crafty side of my life. And I want to thank you for including yourselves in that part of my life. It is grand to have someone to share with. And that's um, what I do here. I share my experiences with crochet, sometimes needle felting, sometimes knitting, and um, basically any craft that I decide to practice while I'm not doing something else. <laughs> else can I say about that? So welcome. Welcome if you are a new viewer. Thank you for pressing that watch button and accepting accepting the invitation to spend a little bit of time with me and hear about what I am getting up to. If you're a returning viewer, of course, I don't want to leave you out. I thank you also for spending your time with me, for waiting, waiting patiently while I come back to this forum to share and update you on the things that I have been doing as of late. So without much more preamble, let's get on with it. I have let the day run by a bit, although I started bright and early this morning. I usually get up around 6.30 and go out for a three mile walk and then I'll come back and my husband has already gone off to work by then and I will settle into my day um, that I have planned. And for today, I had planned to record this podcast, but I wasn't planning on recording it at almost one o'clock in the afternoon. So I've fallen behind on schedule, but it was because basically I wanted to plan as well as I could what I wanted to share with you because I didn't want it to become overwhelming. I didn't want it to, to talk too much about too many things and then just bog you down or even bore you down with all of the details. So I'm going to share some highlights today, specifically because I would like an if, at a future moment to go more into depth and more into details of just one specific project. But today I am going to present what I am, have been working on, but basically I wanted to, to take the time today to make some confessions. It's basically what I was um, coming here today to do was to confess <laughs> that I haven't done what I had said I would do and to, well, you know, share with you a little bit of why and I got distracted and how I got distracted and who distracted me, etc. But let me begin then by presenting as normal the what my walking the talk section in which I share with you how I wear my crochet items because I do use my crochet items that are not home decor, <laughs> my my garments and my jewelry. I find a lot of pleasure in using them. So today, as it is the eve of St. Valentine's Day, if um, you are into those types of celebrations, I really don't think I would need a day to celebrate my love for um, friends and family members that are always dear to me. But you know what I say, any reason is a good reason for celebration. So as long as it's a celebration and chocolate, <laughs> then count me in, count me in. I've been cutting back on the amount of chocolate that I have been allowing myself to eat. So... Um, but still, I will make an exception, I do believe, if I get any chocolates tomorrow. So, let me now share with you, in my Walking the Talk section, what I plan to be wearing tomorrow, say Valentine's Day. You'll all remember, if you've been here for a while, you will remember the earrings. The earrings are a design of my own. They are the... Granny heart earrings or granny square heart earrings, something to that effect, something to do with the granny and heart that I designed way back. The first time I presented these earrings was in episode 41. 
So you can go and jump over there and give a look if you want all the details of um, how they were made. And um, so that was a while back. Today is episode 93, I believe. And therefore, it's been a while. It's been a while. And um, last year, this same day, February the 14th, I was also wearing these earrings on this channel. It appears that they only get used once a year for this celebration, if you'll have me say. And so, yes, they're back again. They're back again. So... These earrings can be found on my blog, which I don't mention a lot on this channel, and I should be, because work goes into maintaining that blog also. So that is mindandmusecrafts.com. Mindandmusecrafts.com. And if it has several pages, if you go to the page that says free patterns, I have tried to keep my patterns in alphabetical order. So granny, look for the G's, and that's where you'll find this pattern. These earrings are not the thumbnail to the pattern because I lost the original version of this crochet pattern. When I realized that I hadn't put it on my blog, I looked for it on my blog some years later to remake it because I wanted them in like a toppy color. And um, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I had to look at these and reverse engineer the original pattern. So I'm not totally sure that what I have written now was how it was designed originally. But I still think it looks good enough to share with you. So you'll find the toppy version of these earrings as a thumbnail to the pattern because I just didn't have the original version anymore so I couldn't I don't know why it was never published but it's published now and it has been for some time second of all but not least I am wearing my what I call my waving 60s top this waving 60s top was based on a design by Clarissa Beth of Crochet Cakes and she called it her vintage waves top her vintage waves top and basically the idea was to use up stash, combining cotton, a cotton thread, or not a thread, actually a yarn, a, hmm, maybe it's a sport weight or a worsted weight cotton. I used drops, drops saffron in the color Bordeaux. It's red, right? It's red. I think the number... I'll check. The number was number 20. I do have notes today to try and keep this organized. So you'll see me looking down every once in a while. Anyway, it was Bordeaux, number 20. And that's the red color. And the other color that you see in between that formed the waves was a one skein that Clarissa Beth gave me to test out this pattern. She also gave me the, the Bordeaux. But secondly, she gave me the wool yarn, which was from Stitchcraft and Wizardry from her, her Care Bear series. And I really don't know if she's still doing them. I I don't I think she she did some changes to it, but you can still find some um of the colorways. This one was Cheer Bear. And Cheer Bear is I'll also include a picture here so you can see it more clearly as it was as it looked in the cake that I was using it is has like a pink a light pink foundation and onto that light pink foundation she has um variegated colors of yellow and green purple and red and also some speckles and you, every once in a while you can see some very bright speckles of green and yellow so it does have an and I I think that the best yarns to crochet up are speckled yarns, but not um, intensely speckled. Lightly speckled yarns look so pretty in crochet. So I think that this combination goes very well together, even though the cheer bear doesn't have a drop of red. But I actually think that that makes it look better because then 
this, um, it stands out. I was going to make it with a Halloween color, but the Halloween colorway that I had did have some of this darker, like wine red in it. And so it didn't pop out as much as I wanted it to. So I went with the Cheer Bear from Stitchcraft and Wizardry. She's an Australian dyer, but um, she is very much a friend of Clarissa Beth. And so Clarissa Beth received this yarn from her and generously gave it to me so I could try and test this make for her. So you can have fun with that. It is a fun pattern and it works up pretty quickly. And I really, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. And it is not the coolest of days here because our temperatures are starting to rise, you know, as, as we're getting closer to March. And, um, but it is, cool enough for me to wear it so yay for that well as a side note now that i mentioned ravelry i don't know how many of you still use ravelry i personally use it a lot i think it, it is the best place to keep track of your projects it is a wonderful place as a maker to publish your patterns but it is still it is still a good platform I think they've gotten over some of the issues that upset a lot of people in the previous years. It had a lot to do with the background change from one color to another. People were very upset with them. I think it was from a light green to white. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I was never bothered by either the previous color or the new color, so I didn't share that perception. I think that maybe what had bothered people most might have been the um, inaction or just um, they didn't feel that their complaints were being listened to. So they kind of felt ignored. These changes are what's going and there's no question about it. I don't think that is what happened. I do think you have the possibility of changing those colors now and um, turning down the contrast or choosing a, a dark background but still many people were hurt and have stayed away from it. Personally, like I said, I haven't had those issues and I am still a big fan of Ravelry. So one of the tasks that I took upon myself at the beginning of the year, of the year was to check back because I'm not really good at completing a project and immediately putting it onto Ravelry or what might even be better, putting a project on Ravelry as soon as I start it and then leaving updates as I complete it and finally sharing my final thoughts and having an, a completion date for it. Because that would be a wonderful, that would be wonderful to have that. Then I would know how long projects have taken me. But I don't usually have that. I usually get the feel for how long something has taken me by looking at old podcasts and checking my description box and seeing what I talked about and when. And it would be much more efficient if I made better use of Ravelry, but well, we are what we are. But I do check in every once in a while and try to upload things that I have um, made, like over the Christmas season where I tend to make a couple of things. So this project is up there. I already told you that the earrings, I don't know if the earrings are up there. I'd have to check. But I know that this is up the bag, mushroom bag that I made for Elizabeth in December is up there. Um, the Christmas sweater that I made is also up there. And if you by any chance, sidetracking again, <laughs> getting distracted again, if you by any chance follow Allie of Story I Allied on Instagram or Little Drops of Wonderful on YouTube, that's one of her channels. She does have two channels, but that's the crochet and knitting channel. Then you might have heard recently, well, I take that back. You would have to have listened to her other channel, which is, I think, A Wonderful Life. That's like a more family-oriented channel where she shares things, uh, trips with her family, things that she does with her family, the growing up of her daughters, her family life. And there she mentioned recently on her latest, the latest podcast, 
they're not really podcasts, but the latest recording to that channel. She calls them vlogs, I believe. That was about an upcoming cow that she's thinking about running, which is a year-long cow for making a Christmas sweater. So she's at the stage where she has organized her stash, look into her stash and see what yarns does she have that could be used to make a sweater. She's going specifically for color work. So she might want to have a base colorway and then maybe a couple of colors for the color work. And she's been looking at patterns. Nothing has been decided yet, except that she wants to make this journey along with her viewers. So she wants to come back every once in a while and uh, open a Ravelry page and allow people to communicate there and to share their ideas on their and their updates on their crochet. Chris, what does that be crochet? It can be knit or crochet or whatever. It's a Christmas sweater. That's the idea. It doesn't have to be Christmas themed in the sense that you don't have to do it red and green and use kinds of uh, Christmas um, icons. It can just be a Christmas sweater in the sense that it will be a sweater that you will wear during Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so guess who is thinking about doing that? I won't tell you right now because I haven't made any decision on that, but it seemed like an idea something that I would be called into, right? The book cover, the spell book cover might be there. I'm not sure because I know that I did a post to my blog about detail on how I made each of the sections. So I don't know if I also put that onto Ravelry. But the idea is um, I am there and if you ever need to look up something that I mentioned here, on the podcast to um, get more details. I'll warn you that I only go up there once the item is finished, but yeah, eventually it, it gets published there. Now, we have a dog in the background that seems to like to bark all day and all night long. So excuse me if the barks come out. He's not my dog. I can't control that. I will try, try to talk louder if that is possible. So moving on, that was just um, a side note because sometimes I forget to mention when I update my blog or I update Ravelry. And you know, it's time, it takes time to do that. So I might as well mention it on this channel. Moving on then to my confessions. Those projects that got me distracted from my plan, the plan that I made at the beginning of the year, which was to, by the end of January, have completed two winter sweaters and then put it away and be done with my winter crochet for what was left of the year. Well, I got distracted, as I said, because, because there is a certain amount of satisfaction and a certain amount of enjoyment, happiness found in getting distracting, getting distracted from a project that is occupying all of your time but not very interesting or colorful or colorful so yes i let myself get distracted one morning it was simply the fact that i woke up and i decided that i wanted to make a peacock feather now this idea has been in my mind for a long time i'll confess it's not it wasn't that day that it came was the first time that it was in my mind. But that was the day where I woke up and I said, today I'm going to do this. So I started designing a peacock feather in crochet. And I'll show you my first attempt. Uh, my first attempt was this one. In which I... Just use some colors that I had in my stash and um, though I completed it and I jotted down the notes, what I found was that I wanted a simpler version because for this one I made a magic circle and I did some half double crochets 
into that magic circle. And then I did single crochets into the center of that circle all the way around, trying to make this middle part slight of like fluffy and puffy, as I was seeing um, the... I could probably share that with you with the image that I was studying to design my peacock feather. So I'll put it up here so you can see. Then I got to thinking about it and I said, oh, you know, maybe I should simplify this. If my intention is to write down a pattern and for somebody else to follow my pattern to make this, then I should try simple. Simple is always best. So I redesigned it a second time. But when I went to redesign it, I erased. I have a little notebook where I jot down all of my my ideas. And I just erased all of the instructions that I had used uh, that I had used to create this version. And so basically I was just starting over again. I found myself starting over again. So anyway, I didn't want this one to go to waste. So what I did to this one was I continued making um, a cord and I added a um, tassel. This is a hand, not a handmade tassel. It's a ta purchased tassel that I've had for some time in my jewelry stash. And so this cord is also a crochet cord that I made simply by following a diagram chart that I found on Pinterest. I said, oh, I want to make a cord, and so they're just going to waste, and I want to make a bookmark. And so I looked up crochet cords on Pinterest, and somebody, and I can, in the description box below, I can put the credit to that person, so if you want to go by and see that, um, was showing this design, and they actually put up the sketch, the schematic, for creating it, and so uh, I followed it, and I got this. It's a very ingenious way of going from one of these, I guess, I don't know, they might be trapezoids, to the next trapezoid, like going from side to side. It's a very ingenious way to do that. It, it is free because it's on Pinterest, but I will share the the link with you below. Okay, so there's my peacock bookmark, which distracted me. I still think that I did this all with size 10, Aunt Lydia's size 10 yarn, and I used a one millimeter hook. I used a one millimeter hook. I went up to 1.5 millimeter hook, but maybe I should have used a number three yarn instead of a number 10 so that it would be sturdier. But I was thinking as always, I do with my earrings, I'll probably add some glue to the back to make it a little bit more sturdy but i i kind of like that and maybe you know somebody else might like it too i don't know but anyway i that's my my crochet bookmark peacock flower crochet bookmark then i went on to the redesign and here's the redesign which for better or for worse i don't know I found other colors in my stash that I didn't really remember that I had when I did this one. So you can compare this to my original the image that I was working from and see why I decided to change my colors. But anyway, this one is a bit simpler. So instead of going all the way around in the magic circle and then going back over the magic circle to create the center, I start out with these stitches here in a magic circle, then complete the darker blue stitches in the magic circle, and then move on to each of my different colors. And this one I have added sort of like a, a little chain here from which I can dangle it and wear it. Let me see, in comparison to this heart, it is very similar in size to the heart, but a bit larger than let's say the teardrop earrings that I have made previously but I think I think I like it enough that I would wear it and I am also thinking about adding fringe to the bottom I don't know just adding fringe all the way along the side to kind of like make it look more like a feather do you think I should do that 
I mean, I would wear it because with my short hair recently, I, I'm in for, I'm due for a haircut, obviously. But even maintaining my hair short, I really think that I like long earrings. I really think that I do like them. So, yeah, I am thinking about doing that too. What do you think? Should I add the fringe to it and make it really look, make it look really feathery? Uh, I don't know. Seems like something that, that might, that I might be attracted to. But anyway, that was a distraction. And believe it or not, it was a very, a distraction for a couple of days. Because I kept, when you work on a design like this, you're basically doing free form where you have no instructions to follow. I wanted this top part to be wider at the top than at the bottom. I don't know if you noticed that in the image that I shared with you. So I had to plan what um, stitches I was going to use at the top versus what stitches I would use on, let's say, the next round, which was thin at the top and longer at the bottom. And there were tons of issues with um, uh, when to work more than one stitch in the same stitch and how to increase the length of my stitches so that this bottom part would look nice. And it just took me what seemed like forever. I mean, I did get frustrated, leave it and move on to something else, but I kept coming back to it. I kept coming back to it. So, yeah, that's my... Um, that's my design. I still don't think it's 100%. Like I'm seeing here, I don't know why. I messed up when I changed my yarn and you can see that blue stitch there out of place. So yeah, it's not 100%, but when it is, it will be a pattern that I will add to my blog in case you like me like peacocky feathers. <laughs> Well, there, that's one of the distractions. My confessions, I was distracted by that because it was much more colorful than those crochet sweaters that I was working on. And the crochet sweaters were just at a point where they were taking forever. So I got distracted. So the second project that distracted me from my winter garments was a Tunisian crochet project. Now, um, I don't know how many of you follow TL Yarn Crafts on YouTube, but Tony of TL Yarn Crafts is an avid crocheter. She's a crochet designer, and um, frequently she presents Tunisian crochet designs. I even She has a lot of tutorials for different Tunisian crochet stitches on her YouTube channel. And um, she also, I believe, published a book for Tunisian crochet towards the end of last year. So on the first episode of her podcast this year, she presented a interchangeable Tunisian crochet hook set. But it was a metal hook set that was sourced for her by Sorella Yarns. And they were Sorella Yarns and Tony of TL Yarns have a collaboration. I believe it is for a temperature uh, blanket this year, but they sourced these hooks and made them available on their site, sorellayarns.com, and selling them. Obviously, they were selling them. Um, um, and Tony presented them on that first podcast. And when I saw that, I was reminded of how much... I really enjoy Tunisian crochet, and so I find that one of the easiest way to pick up a new craft is through making small, manageable projects. Small, manageable projects, such as dishcloths. And so I went online and I looked up a pattern for a Tunisian crochet dishcloth, but I wanted, I wanted my dishcloth to be... Valentine's Day oriented. So I was interested in a heart shaped or some dishcloths that had a heart in them in some way. I found online under Petals and Picos. There you go. 
she organized, she organized a, back in 2017, she organized a cow, it, probably a year-long cow, and where every month a different designer presented a Tunisian crochet design for that month. February was obviously a heart design. So in her post for each month, she includes a schematic, a chart. A chart to follow and the instructions on how to interpret the chart, but she doesn't include written instructions. Not in, not on these posts. I don't know if the original designer included the written instructions somewhere or they had a Facebook group running. I don't know if in that group they were presented other things, but um, the chart is small. It is um, 35 rows and, and 30 stitches across. So it's not that large. You could just sit down and write it yourself if you really wanted to, or you could read the chart. So I use this chart. I've also seen the same chart presented on other posts, on other blog posts, and um, I've seen it crocheted instead of Tunisian crochet. And so you can also color work it instead of or you can color work it, or you can just use the pattern in one single color because the, the stitches for the heart are made in a different stitch. So the pattern actually um, stands out, stands out from all, from the regular, from the rest of the rectangle. Yeah, because it is a rectangle. So this is what I worked up. There it is. And I just used a random white worsted weight cotton that I had in my stash. It might be pearls and plum. It's kind of like an off-white, but I'm not sure what what white it is or what company it belongs to. But it is a worsted weight cotton. I used a number six Tunisian crochet hook. And it hasn't been blocked, which it probably should be, but there it is. And it might have a couple of mistakes here and there. Plus my tension, you can see that my tension isn't perfect yet in Tunisian crochet. So I started out with two rows of Tunisian crochet knit stitch, which is this thick part here at the bottom. It The pattern did not call for that, but I was doing, a, I had a different design in mind, and then I switched to this one. Then the rest of the pattern has these, this ribbing is called by one row of what they what is called the reversed simple stitch, the reversed simple stitch, which is just worked in the back loop of um, the stitches. And then the rest is a combination of knit stitches and reversed Tunisian crochet slip stitch. So that is what makes it look different and so that the heart will stand out for you. It is not difficult to work up. It didn't take me more than a day. Well, actually more than a couple of hours of a day because I didn't do it in one sitting. But um, yeah, then I finished up with a row. I don't know if I did. Did I finish up? No, this one just has a row. The, the actual pattern has a row of reversed simple stitch and then the simple stitch the reverse simple stitch and then a bind off, a crochet bind off. So um, I probably it probably would have looked better if the top and the bottom had been the same. But as I say, I was thinking about making something else and then I switched to this idea. And um, yeah, it's okay that mine is not perfect yet because of the fact that I am not a very avid Tunisian crocheter, but I think you get the idea. And it would be even more emphasized if I had done Tunisian crochet color work, but I don't, I haven't tried that yet. I just think that a couple of my stitches are off. I don't think I followed my rows correctly in all of this. But there you go, an easy way to practice Tunisian crochet. Here's the back. 
Here's the back. Either way, the heart stands out. And so if you were interested, I'll show you all the patterns for that year. This was, I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned it was 2017. So, but they're all still, all the charts are still there. So there's the charts. So we've got the snowman in January, the heart in February, etc. Going across March, April, um, June, let's see. This one over here, this is August. I'm not too sure what it is. Let's see if it says it. It looks to me like a wave, an ocean wave. It just says August, Tunisian crochet stitch mark. Yeah, it's a wave design. It's a wave design. So um, um, that's for August. I guess a lot of people go to beaches over where this person lives in August because we don't do that here. August, the sea starts getting cooler, and so a lot of people avoid it. Um, so we've got sunshine, and we've got the star, the wave, a football for September, a witch's hat in October, the cornucopia in November, and a Christmas tree in December. So... It's a nice collection of Tunisian crochet patterns. And I think that you could actually make this in maybe a wool yarn if you don't want to do it in cotton. And um, worsted weight wool. And you could make 12 of these squares and stitch them together and end up with a throw or a blanket even depending on how big your yarn is that covers the whole year and so now that's another idea that I have stuck in my head that I think could work so yeah Tunisian crochet distracted me now I want to do one episode uh, during this year specifically on Tunisian crochet. I want to compare the two sets of interchangeable crochet hooks that I now possess. And I maybe work up a couple of stitches along with you if you have never seen how Tunisian crochet is worked up. And then maybe even present a couple of projects um, if that might be, and that might be, um, planning too much for one episode, but I would like at least one episode to review, if any of you are interested in them, the Tunisian crochet. Because metal Tunisian crochet hooks are not, um, well, yeah, I shouldn't say that because you can find aluminum Tunisian crochet hooks. I don't, no, I'm not sure if the ones that, that Tony presented along with um, Sorella are aluminum they are lightweight but i'm not sure if they're aluminum i can check that but you might also have bamboo or plastic or some type of resin and um as with regular crochet hooks well your tension is different with every one of those um types of hooks they have different characteristics they have a different feel to them and they work up differently with different types of yarn. So a wool won't work up as, as the same as a cotton blend, let's say. And uh, those things are good to know if you ever decide to expand your crafting skills. I think those things are good to know. So yes, that was my recent excursion into Tunisian crochet. Not the only one. If you've been around for a while, you know that I have made several short excursions into the craft um yeah and every once in a while i'll come back with one so um that was my recent valentine's day project for all of you and so that distracted me tunisian crochet practicing a new stitch i never done reverse simple stitch before combining those stitches and uh, yeah something that I could work up in an, an hour or so a couple of hours and distract myself from the agony of sleeve island or knitting 
a bulky weight sweater. And that did the trick. It was very satisfying. It made me quite happy. So the third project that distracted me from what I should have been doing, which my plan to complete my winter crochet, was once again free form crochet. Now, if you've been here for a while, once again, freeform crochet has been a thing that I have wanted to try out for a while, that I have sort of like played around with it, but I think that this is probably the first serious, more of a like long-term project that I have done in this type of crochet. And, I will blame, who am I going to blame for this one? I will blame Claudia of Sunburst Crochet. If um, she has a channel on YouTube called Sunburst Crochet, Sunbird Crochet. And she's also Sunbird Crochet on Instagram. She is also an avid crocheter. She has designed. Um, and uh, I do... Follow her on both YouTube and Instagram. And recently she published a story. Was it a story? Maybe a reel to Instagram in which she extended the invitation to everyone to join in on a cal that she was going to be running. A year-long cal that was inspired by art. The idea was to look up a particular piece of art, a painting, a sculpture, a, it could be architecture, whatever type of art you wanted, and try to replicate that art with crochet. And so on Instagram, she created a group, and the group is called But Make It With Crochet. I'll check that for you. But Make It Crochet but make it crochet. And the hashtag, um, which she looks into every once in a while, uh, is called, but make it crochet cow, with the number sign in front, as is the norm for hashtags. So if you write to Claudia and you express your desire to follow along with this group, not everyone in the group is going to make something as from what I have seen expressed, but some people are just following it to see what others are doing and how others are inspired. Um, so she extended me the invitation. I accepted obviously the invitation. And as long as, as soon as I accepted it, I had to start thinking about, well, what am I going to work on in this um, craft group? What would be my project? And my mind obviously went back to those free form crochet courses that I purchased. I registered in them, but you need to, in order to register, you need to pay. Oh, I think now it's been like two years for the first course, maybe one year for the second. The first course was simply free form crochet, techniques for free form crochet. And the second course was abstract crochet portraits. They are both designed, the courses are both designed by Jose Dammers, and I have mentioned this before. So I went back to look at those courses, specifically the course that I had not, that I had mm, looked through and watched a couple of modules, but had not worked with. And I began working the modules one by one. And I am up to probably module seven by now. And this is what I have. This is what I have up to now. So you are provided with a sketch as part of your course materials. And I really wasn't aware that we were provided the sketch until yesterday when I was, I looked at the email that I had been sent by the teacher of the course <laughs> and 
I had stayed at the top of the email, but if you go down, down to the bottom of the email, you will see your course materials. So the idea is to print out that sketch and follow along with it. But I just followed along with what the teacher was doing in the course, the instructor was doing in the course and, and making the amount of stitches that she was making, etc. And um, I was able to come up with this. Now, my idea, this is a canvas bag that I might have presented previously in the course. Uh, I don't know. I think I purchased it maybe at Joann's or at Walmart's. I don't, I'm not sure particularly. It was on clearance. So I purchased it way back when I began my freeform crochet, uh, practicing freeform crochet, because my idea was to fill it up with freeform crochet. That's still my idea, basically. I've now got the face complete. My idea is to add some bangs or some hair at the top and um, maybe ears and earrings to side. I don't have room for a neck on the front, but what I plan, what I thought about doing was to extend the back of the head, the, which is not part of the course, but I want to extend the back of the head, um, maybe using dreadlocks or something to create the hair. And I want to fill up all the back with the hair all of the back of the canvas bag with the hair from my portrait, from my portrait. Okay, so it'll have a front and the back. And the back is simply going to be hair. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll pull the hair together in the middle and use like a flower at, uh, as a clasp to pull the hair together or something like that. I can put flowers in her hair and stuff like that, but it will be free form and it will be hair on the back. That is my idea. So at least let me tell you that the entirety of the project is being worked up with Aunt Lydia's number three crochet thread and a 2.5 millimeter crochet hooks. This project has a lot of slip stitches to because you, you're trying to fill in the gaps that are in a particular sketch. So sometimes those slip stitches, you need to have handy a smaller stitch to work back into them as you move around. So, But for mostly it is a 2.5, sometimes a 2.25. The only yarn that is on Aunt Lydia's is obviously this one, which this yarn is a eyelash yarn from, I don't know what company it's from. Uh, I travel to Florida next week. I've got a lot of stuff to do around the house this week. So maybe this might be a good project to take with me. It will then also allow me to make that actual video of freeform crochet that I would like to make for you. I would like to have a separate episode on freeform crochet with some details of the of the technique how to work up some scrumbles um hints on how to fill in for example pointy edges and things like that and things that i think would help somebody who would wanted to start out in freeform crochet so what do you think about that I've given you two ideas for upcoming episodes that would be specific about one topic, the Tunisian crochet, and another one specifically on freeform crochet. Is that something that you would be interested in? If it is, if you will be interested in that, please leave me a comment below and um, so I know that um, you're willing to um, follow me on that episode also and make some time to listen to maybe something that you haven't tried before but you might be interested in trying. Now moving on to give you a short recap of my winter projects that I should have been done with by now and I did not finish because due to all the distractions that I let myself fall into. Anyway, the first one is this. You'll remember that this is this project is in 
mostly but not completely based on the Kelly crew neck by Two of Wands. It's by Two of Wands, but it is only available through SorellaYarns.com. So there's the Kelly crew neck. The photo doesn't really give an, a good, you can't really get a good close-up of what it looks like. But I will confess again that I would like to remake this co crochet sweater exactly the way this pattern presents it. Because you know that I started making a crochet sweater of my own interpretation let's say freestyle and then found this one in my stash and decided to go along with this one so I did take out some of the guesswork that I had to make if I just made it on my own and kind of get it done quicker so I'm not using the same stitch she uses a herringbone double crochet and I'm using the herringbone half double crochet because that's what I had started out my project with I was working on I don't know. Was I already working on the sleeves the last time uh, we met up? Maybe, maybe not. But I started working on the sleeves uh, two at a time because I want to make sure that I have enough yarn that I can get them to the same length. Um, when I reach the end, the ribbing will be once again in this sort of toppy colored yarn. And I was hoping to have enough yarn to make like an elbow. What do you call that? That The oval that they put on the elbow for some sweaters. Because I kind of like that. It's an elbow guard or something like that. I kind of like that. We'll see. My second uh, winter project that has not been completed was, as you know, my knit, my knit sweater. Which again was going to be right a, a was an impulsive make going to be very sporadic no planning involved whatsoever and then I decided that I had probably bit off more than I could chew so therefore I tried to look for a pattern that I could follow and I found more than one made in this bulky weight but the one that I think that I am following the most is also a pattern by Sorella, but this one can be found on Sorella.com. So I will remind you a basic white sweater in chunky yarn. I was finished with the front and I realized that I had messed it up, I'd done wrong for a couple of reasons. Because you'll also remember that I was trying to follow the Warwick sweater, which is also a bulky weight sweater, knit, but that one is a paid for pattern. But in that pattern, she does make, Sorella's pattern is a drop shoulder, whereas the Warwick sweater is, you pick up around the sleeve, but she does, bind off a couple of stitches on the edging when she starts her sleeve she does bind off a couple of stitches so the sleeve is is not as far out as, as in the dropped sweater as in the dropped sweater so i had done that on the front but i hadn't done it on the back and it's, that's not going to work out is it no because your shoulder is thinner on the back and it extends more this way so i said no that it's not going to work you have to do it on the front and on the back. So doing it on the front and the back mean ripping, I mean, frogging several rows of the back down to the sleeve. So maybe about 20 rows, starting over again. And I thought it was simpler just to rip up the front that I hadn't completed. And well, because the mistake that I made was that I bound off three on one side and four on the other. So definitely that was not going to work. 
I would have to rip it back anyway. But since I was ripping back, I decided that I would just make this as Sorella makes hers. And I'm going to make it straight across with some shaping only for the neckline because I don't like boat necks. And then, um, so I've got a ways to go. I think I am about here right now. I'm about here. Right now. So I've got a ways to go. Probably about eight rows to go. And then I can shape my neckline and do the shoulders and I'll be able to piece them together. So I might be able to finish that this week and maybe when I leave, they will both be pieced together. I don't think that I will be able to work up the sleeves. Now, when I come back in May, because I leave for Feb and for Florida for uh, three weeks and then I'll move on to Alabama for a month. And when I come back in May, it will be quite hot here. So I don't know if I want to be working on a bulky weight. This is acrylic, 70% acrylic and 30% wool. But I don't know if I want to be working on that in May. But unfortunately, if I don't work on it in May, it will not be completed by September. So I need to maybe turn on the air conditioning or something and work on it because we will no longer have cool days in May. So my hope is to get these projects as far as possible in the days that I have left here and then leave them pretty well in an advanced state for when I come back. And then I'll be able to finish them when I come back. And at some future, on some future podcast, um, share them with you, share the finished project with you. Although I probably won't be able to sit here and wear them. <laughs> I can do some video to like kind of like show you how they're fitting at the moment. So, sorry for leading you on and not being able to complete these. But I believe that distractions are good for the soul, good for the mind, and good for keeping that mojo, creative mojo going and not burning out or by working on things that you um, no longer want to work on. But I don't want to give them up because I don't want these projects to stay unfinished. I want them finished um, for our trip. Because there's nothing better than going on a trip to a foreign country with a lot of strange people and having on crochet garment that you made yourself or a knit garment that you made yourself. So that is really going to be it for today. I thank you for joining me if you reached it this far for putting up with me and I hopefully will be back in a couple of weeks and I will be recording in Florida and I'll be able to share with you some more on these spontaneous projects that I have been working on. So until we meet again, thank you for commenting below. Thank you for sharing this video, if you can, with somebody else who you think would like and be interested in what I do here. Thank you for sharing your time and just being here with me today. Um, and wanted to catch up with me. So until we meet again, keep yourself safe, keep yourself healthy, and keep crafting. Bye for now. I'll see you soon.